New features was one of the categories that was of interest in the latest poll I did. And iterators, being a fairly new feature, deserves a tutorial. They can be powerful for certain applications because of the control they provide. So let's take a look at using iterators. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Iterators are a way in JavaScript to pull information from a source in a one at a time fashion. Now think about that. Think about how that can be valuable. What if you were receiving data from a database and wanted to deal with each row one at a time, not process them all at once? Or you may want to access the values in an array as you need them one at a time and not process them all at once. So basically any collection in JavaScript that is designated as an iterator can be accessed in this one, of the, one at a time way. What we usually do with collections in JavaScript is that we iterate over these collections using a loop of some sort. This is common with arrays, but we're going to look at another approach which can be very helpful in certain situations. So we're going to use a simple example to introduce this, but in a later tutorial, I may use something more complex. But if you have had a chance to use an iterator in your code, please provide more examples in the description section. It can help others that are learning this structure for the first time. All right, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to set up a simple array because that's what we're going to use to show how an iterator works. So I'm just going to have four numbers in it, and that's all. Now we need to set up the iterator. Now the structure may seem strange if you have used JavaScript for a while. But with ES6, a new primitive type was introduced called the symbol. And this new type comes with some predefined symbols that provide certain behaviors. So we're going to use a built-in symbol, iterator, which represents a method that can be used to create an iterator. So here's how we do that. I'm going to set variable it and set that equal to this array. And then using square brackets, we're going to designate the symbol dot iterator. Now remember, I mentioned that this symbol represents a method that can be used to create an iterator. So since this represents a method, then we can invoke it with parens like that. So the structure seems a bit strange, but this is how you would do it. Now let's see what the value of this is. So let me save this and I'm going to go to my HTML page and open the console after I refresh it, make sure that code's active. Now, so far we're not showing anything, but remember I set the variable it equal to this. So if I now look at it, we see that it is an array iterator. That's what it is. So what can we do with that? How are we able to access the data that is part of this? Well, that is done using the next method. So anytime we want to get a value from this iterator, we do dot next parens, and then look what it returns. It returns an object that has two properties. One property is the value, the other property is done. And done is either true or false, meaning if it has completed going through all the values, then it will be true. Otherwise, it will be false, meaning there is more to retrieve. So the value is 1. That's the very first value in that array was 1. If we wanted to then see the next one, there we go. Second value is 2. And done is still false, so it's not finished. So you can see how you can access these one at a time when you need them. You don't have to process them all at once. We could be doing other things. Or we could be waiting for a user to indicate that the next value should be pulled. Something like that. It's a nice structure for dealing with code. Now, one collection in JavaScript that you may not think is an iterator is 
a string. Let me just show that really quick before we finish here. So if I set up a string with my name and then I set up another iterator for that. Once again, we use square brackets and then the predefined symbol which points to a method that creates an iterator. So we invoke it. Now we'll go ahead and save that. I have to spell symbol correct. That is required. Try that again. All right, now I have two. I can do it.next. And I can do mm.next. And this one is going to provide the letters. It will go through the letters one at a time that make up that string. So mm.next, the next one will be the T. it.next, really quick. I'm going to do one more it.next so you can see how the final value looks. Here we have a value of undefined and done is now set to true. So it's gone through that entire thing. So that is a JavaScript iterator. And hopefully you can see the power of this. And if you have used this in some of your code, provide some examples in the description section. That would be very helpful. Now before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Now if you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you can hit that subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.